Can you just give a quick synopsis on sort of the differences between fair play and wide bind? I know Apple famously years ago had a hard lock on content where you couldn't share it. And then Steve Jobs pushed to allow for fair play, which allowed you to share it to a certain level. Um, wide vine obviously seems to be a, a much more traditional sort of hard lock, but can you give just a quick synopsis of either the top two or the top three? Well, at this point, um, most technologies do roughly the same thing. I mean, there's some minor variations of what you can and cannot do from a perspective of, um, and I guess it's more driven based on device, uh, whether or not you can do output protection levels as I've met, briefly mentioned. But at the end of the day, most um, technologies are the same, uh, with the exception being that when you are, if you are a um, DRM provider like us, um, Google and Microsoft give you, give us the play ready certificates that we need to issue out um, licenses and generate keys. Whereas play ready and Apple dictate it in a different direction, they require um, content owners and content providers to actually get that same certificate. Uh -huh. But outside of that, from a perspective of um, technology itself, they are roughly the same and they work the same and um, they are geared towards their own specific device. So PlayReady works uh, much better on a Windows device, Widevine on a Chrome device, uh, no, Google uh, device, Android device, and then FairPlay for an Apple device. Got it. Right. Olga, let me just ask real quick, when you say it works better on those devices, what happens on the devices where it doesn't work as well? Well, I say it works better from a perspective of, and this is the reason why we chose to go SDK less, is that it takes out a level of complexity. Um, logic being that if Microsoft pushes out an update to the operating system, to the browser, to anything, they would test play ready as well. And the moment they push out a new update, first of all, it is obviously always backwards compliant. And second of all, to add any new features or any new modifications does not require our clients to do anything. Doesn't require them to update um, an SDK, doesn't require any sort of work. It requires work on our backend to implement all the features, but once they're implemented, it's also very seamless. And it also takes away time that you would normally spend trying to add extra levels of development. So for me, I think it works better solely because it takes away unexpected issues, glitches, and complexities. And I would add to that, uh, Eric, that the SDK list is a smart move because a lot of SDKs aren't very well documented and the SDK tends to come out after the operating system update. So there's this lag of a, a couple of weeks to a couple of months sometimes even. So. All right, very good. Yeah.